Crazy thing about this world, everybody talks all day about what doesn't even matter. Mainstream media, social media, the news, none of it matters. Look, look at the science. There's something called Dunbar's number, 150 people. We came from, we evolved, adapted from groups, your great-great-grandparents, the last 10,000 generations, in little tribes of 150 people. Some of those tribes still exist. The Hadzas in Africa, the Ashe in Brazil, the rainforest. They care about what actually matters. Friends, family, romance, food on the table. Civilization and its discontents, as Sigmund Freud said. Have we even gotten better? I don't know, because now all we talk about is what doesn't matter. Let's take a case in point. What do we educate kids on? Everything that doesn't even matter. History, memorized dates, that doesn't matter. You know what does matter? You should come, I live with Amish for two and a half years. Every Amish 18 year old, they know how to build their own house, grow their own food. They know how to negotiate their own deals. They know how to be entrepreneurs. They know how to raise their own income. No nine to five jobs or rare, at least the traditional Amish, no nine to five job. I'm not saying the Amish have it all figured out. I'm saying the more we revert to our tribal ways, Robin Dunbar, the famous sociologist, said we evolved in groups and tribes of 150, the more we'll care about what matters. You know why anxiety is at an all time high, depression's at an all time high? Because it doesn't matter what everybody looks like in social media. So as you scroll through it and you see the best highlights of their life, of course you're gonna be depressed. It's too large of a sample set. It's eight billion people. Our brain gets scrambled. It starts to focus on things that don't even matter. It's interesting, I see guys, you know, there's a lot of, kind of men versus women now on social media and here's what's wrong with women and here's what's wrong with men and men talk about their height. Your height doesn't matter because you can't change it. So you focus on what does matter. Do you have all the elements that a tribes person would have? Can you raise your own food? Whether that's literal or whether you can provide it, but can you hunt for it on your own? Not just through a job where there's another hunter who maybe gives you a little piece of of me in the nine to five job. I'm not saying that everybody should be purely entrepreneurial, but you should have a backup skill so that if you lose your job, it doesn't really matter because you have another flow of income. You can be a handyman, you can build houses, you can, I mean, and by the way, never look down on physical occupations where you're doing something with your hands. My friend used to get embarrassed. He'd go out on dates and women would shake his hand and be like, wow, you have such soft hands. You don't need, you don't want soft hands. I don't care how advanced civilization gets. You should still be tribal. And I'm not saying we should go back to the worst of tribes where the, you know, Comanche Indians or, or skinning people alive and, you know, roasting babies over a fire. No offense if you're Comanche Indian, but, you know, Kwana Parker and some of these people are pretty ruthless. We can take the best of our tribal heritage. Everybody's evolved, adapted and everybody's 10,000 generations of great grandparents were tribal and they cared about what mattered. You know what they talked about? It's like, how are my children doing? Not what war is happening 6,000 uh, 6, miles away from where you live. Tribe people didn't care. It's not important. Now you might say, Ty, isn't global news? Shouldn't we be boycotting this genocide here and this genocide there? Well, to a certain extent, maybe, maybe, but if we lay out the facts of history, has intervention by other countries always worked? Now, some people would say, well, World War II, that's when, you know, global countries came together and intervened in the story against, you know, Nazi Germany. But if you really examine it, if everybody had been taking care of their own tribe, let every man sweep his own front porch and the whole world will be clean. You should be worried about your own front porch not everybody else's, not because they're not important and you're a narcissist, but because you can best sweep your own because you understand all the circumstances. I don't really understand the full, if I look at the, you look at the last big conflicts over the last 50 years of global history, whether it be the Middle East, whether it be Eastern Europe, whether it be parts of Africa, the Central America, other countries like the United States stepped in and probably made it worse, even though they meant best, maybe. Let everyone sweep their own front porch. Let everyone take care of their own 150 people in their tribe. And you won't need welfare. 
or food stamps or all of these things. You might say, Ty, that's not practical. Okay, what's your definition of practical? Look what happened in the United States with the rise of housing projects in big cities. Decimated populations, various black and brown populations. My dad from Harlem, New York, Spanish Harlem. He got put in prison there. He was probably part of that cycle of like, oh, let's just give people free houses and see what happens. It doesn't work. So you can't say, well, I feel bad for society, therefore I'm gonna implement a policy that quells my own guilt to try to help a group that's so far away you can't even understand their problems. Let everyone sweep their own front porch and the 150 people in their co-centric circle, their friend group is Robin Dunbar's number. Go help your neighbor, literally your neighbor. Go help your neighbor. I have a farm and I purposely bought it in the middle of an Amish community that I lived in when I was like 19, 20 years old because I'm not Amish, but like I care about them and I go over and help. And the other day, one of my well, uh, well pump broke. My brother, who's not Amish, lives on my one of my farms and he woke up, he had no water and I just happened to be visiting. And one neighbor, David, he came, he lives next house over and he's like, ah, instead of having to hire an expensive well company, he's like, I can just pull up the well. We'll get the bobcat, put a chain around it and just pull it up ourselves. Not self-sufficiency, tribal sufficiency, group, neighbor sufficiency. This is the missing link in the world. It doesn't matter who the president is. Presidents generally reflect the general moral and demographic uh, imperative. Meaning presidents, you know what causation and correlation? Presidents aren't the cause, they're just the effect. Donald Trump or Biden or Obama, they're a reflection. And in hindsight, if you're objective, they did as much good as they did bad. Every one of them. Who's the great president? Who's the great leader in world history? Study the history long enough and you'll find all their skeletons. Every one of them. From George Washington to Joe Biden. Go through it. You ain't going to find any flaw. <laughs> Generally, mentally stable people don't want to rule the world, lead the world. Genghis Khan probably wasn't mentally stable. Okay? He went outside of his tribe and caused a lot of heartache in the world. We need to return to grassroots, man, grassroots. Email your friend from high school that you haven't caught up with. Care about them. What's up in their life? Is their kid in the hospital? Send them something. You don't have to solve problems too far away because even if it was the right thing, it wouldn't be as effective as caring about your Dunbar number of 150 people. Everybody's reading the news. I stopped reading the news. My mom told me, one of the greatest pieces of advice my mom ever gave me is, Ty, anything important, somebody else will tell you. So I learn all the news that I need to know. I used to scroll through the news. Then I'm like, what am I doing? I'm literally hijacking the MPFC of my brain, medium prefrontal cortex. The medium prefrontal cortex is the part of the brain that came later and is logical and it maybe separates us from animals, maybe by some stretch of the imagination, but certainly humans have the ability to be more anxious and project into the future and things like that all out of this MPFC. And so if you're not careful, reading all this news, getting involved in this global stuff, again, you should care and have empathy for people wherever they may be, but you should take action where you can do it and understand the problem. You can understand your high school friend's problem. You know, you can understand your next door neighbor, my neighbor, David, and then this guy, Joe Miller came over because David couldn't fix it. They understood my problem. I needed water. We couldn't take a shower or have literally any water to cook. And we had, were having to haul water for, we had a lot of animals and it, a big cow drank 40, 50 gallons a day in the heat. And I got 2,000 pound Belgian horses. So I had an immediate problem. It wasn't global, it wasn't newsworthy, but who cares? It's what you need. So focus not on what the distraction that you see scrolling through social media. I limit my limit your time scrolling. That algorithm's getting so good, it's hijacking all the primitive parts of our brain that are healthy to build our community and our friends and what matters, friends, family, romance. You know, like soulmates, whether they be your buddies, 
male, female, whether they be romantic partners, your children, your cousins, whatever, that's what matters. And of course, other people's family matter too, but it's not your job duty and it's not even possible. Your brain will fry. It's kind of like taking an iPhone and asking it to do too much or opening too many tabs in the browser of Chrome. You ain't helping anybody because the whole thing freezes and every tab freezes and you have to close them all. That's the world we live in. Mass media, social media, and <clears throat> too much civilization. As Freud called civilization is discontents. He was very right. What an intelligent, misunderstood thinker, boy. You meet people, I bring up Sigmund Freud. Oh, this guy's not that smart. I'm like, I have read a lot of books. There may be of our time, Freud is a thinker, a preeminent mind. Was he right on everything? No, but neither was Sir Isaac Newton, Aristotle, Plato, or Stephen Hawking. But they're out of our league. <laughs> anyway, we got too much civilization. Bring the civilization down. Take the cold showers, you know, eat the primitive food, non-processed. Uh, think about primitive things. How are my kids? How is my mom? How is my grandma? How is my shelter today? Should I be painting this house, whether you rent it or own it? Think primal think tribal? Am I lifting something heavy? Am I acquiring resources in the hunt? That's entrepreneurship. Whether you're trying to become a billionaire, millionaire, or just financially independent. What did I hunt today? Did I sleep enough? It's getting late at night. I should be going to bed. I'll be going to bed. I don't even, I hate this bright. I'm in a place I'm not always in. These lights aren't natural. At night, it should be like fireside lights. I usually have my blue blockers on. You know, get primitive, get tribal, and especially what you pay attention to mentally. Give yourself a break. You know, give yourself a break. Make money for your tribe. Think about the news that's local. I love in Scandinavia when I'm in Sweden or Denmark. Their news, no matter what's happening in the world, they'll show like, <laughs> I forget what it was, it was Norway or what it There was like, during like the Iraqi war invasion, they were like showing a wolf is been found in our local community running through the streets at night killing kittens or something. And people were like, well, why aren't you reporting on Afghanistan? And they're like, well, that's this is what happening in our life. And we will report on that, but that doesn't have to be the first piece of news. And so people are going to argue and say, no, don't you realize all these people, this, that, the other thing. Yeah, all these people die in Middle East because people get their nose in other people's business. Now, there is a time, probably in history, where you should step in multinationally because there's a threat, like a nuclear threat or Adolf Hitler threat. But in hindsight, Hitler could have been dealt with probably, I mean, I'm a big fan of assassination. I'm like, why well, start a world war? You get someone like Adolf Hitler start up again, you're like, you send them a letter. You're like, yo, we're the United States. Uh, we will remove you from the earth. We're gonna drop in 50 dudes and um, we'll do whatever we take. And if they fail, we will. you will be gone off the planet. We're not gonna start a world war. You're overstepping your bounds. If you wanna have a little, you know, boundary wars, Germany with Poland and Czech Republic like they had, or back then it was Czechoslovakia, you know, whatever. Maybe we'll, but watch it, buddy. That's If you ask me, that's what I would do politically. But we're going to assassinate you. Somehow there's this political no assassination thing because most leaders are narcissists. They're like, I'm not going to kill that horrible person because he might try to assassinate me. Forget that. There's a better chance of an assassination being, an attempt, uh, being successful on a lunatic. So, you know, I think it's just nonsense. I would solve things tactically like that going back in history. World War II threw 250 million people out of 1 billion into death, casualties, or displacement. Why? You could have just shot the dude. Really, long distance. Find him, pay infinity money to leave. I mean, America back then, or England, or the, they had a, let's say you got a billion dollars. Just be like, we have a billion dollar bounty on this person's head. It costs trillions in today's dollar for World War II. Maybe un 
knowable dollar amounts. Just be like, we'll give $100 billion to the first person who brings us the head of Adolf Hitler. That'll shut this motherfucker up right away. Or anybody in modern genocide. So even if you try to argue there's moral ground that we needed to step in, no, you didn't. Be more efficient. Be tribal. That's what tribe people would do. Hand-to-hand, one-on-one. -on -one. We'll send one person to kill your one person. Obviously, you can't do that in the case of Nazi Germany, but we'll send one person to shoot you. We're not going to throw 25% of the human population into disarray because of any mad man or mad woman. So that's solve it. Let the world revert to a little more tribalism. I'm not talking about nationalism. Nationalism, in some ways, has just as much problem as the modern world because nations are too large. Tribes should exist. You should focus on them, and tribes can work with their neighboring tribes. Let every man sweep his own front porch, and the whole world be clean, and individual tribes could be allies with each other. This is the path forward. It's probably how the world is going to end up if you watch the evolution of the world anyway. They're probably we're moving to a regression anyway. So, you know, that's my take. I think it's more scientific. I think what we're doing now is very feelings based and empathy based, but misplaced empathy kills people. It's kind of like if you smother your kid when they're sleeping, you mean well, but you may accidentally smother them to death. The emotions that a person, a parent feels to their children still must be modulated by logic and say, okay, well, this kid will do better if they sleep in a different bed or whatever. I'm just using some analogy, but you get my point if you're thinking through what I'm talking about. And that's very simple here. Let every man or woman sweep, sweep their own front porch. Let them care about their friends, their family, their cousins, their uncles, their friends of friends. Let them work out together. Let them make, make money and hunt for money together. Let them be happy together and have parties together. May you, watching this video, spend three days a week with a potluck at your house, with a cookout, with a barbecue, with all the people. May you be filled with that in your life. And sometimes you're gonna have to go to war. Some crazy person moves in the neighborhood. The men of the neighborhood need to show up at that dude's house and be like, bro, you are driving too fast and endangering all of our children. We can do this the easy way or we can do this the hard way. Now, I'm not encouraging you to do this outside of the police, but you get the drift here. You can have a conversation with the person legally. Yo, <laughs> roll up with 15 fathers from that neighborhood. I don't know what you're doing, weirdo, but want to tell you we got you. We're watching you. That solves a lot of problems in every way. Build your tribe, build a company. 150 people in a company is a good number. You know, after that, you probably divide into different companies, really, or it could be divisions, but does the world do well with massive multinational conglomerates? No, everybody becomes zombie. It's kind of like, what's that movie? Where's the, forget the damn movie. They hate their bosses or whatever. It's like everybody becomes a zombie in a big corporation. It's too many people. It's too civilized, man. You get less civilized. Church group. Should be small. I don't need to go to a mega church. I mean, I'm sure I'm going to make someone mad, but come on. Is that really? That's it? You really think that's it? That's the, maybe once in a while a big group meets. Get smaller. Get smaller. Smaller can actually end up bigger and more powerful. So, there'll always be the Genghis Khan. Mass is moving across. There'll always be the big corporations. But if you want to find a good life, health, wealth, love, happiness, shrink the problem that you, the problems you think about. Shrink the people you care about. You don't need to care about more problems. People on social media are like, oh, this dog's in trouble. And then this cat and this person, look, your brain's going to explode and you're going to end up actually helping nobody because paralysis by overanalysis. Or as one of my mentors, he wrote the book, Paradox of Choice. When you have too much choice, you end up freezing. We're not built for that. We're built for 150 people. Dunbar's number doesn't mean you never think outside of that, but that's your prime, that's your world. Live in that world, work out with that world, eat with that world, you know? Marry in that world, you know? Again, not that there's just 150 people and that's your whole marriage pool. But I mean, I've done this, men have done this, women too. You get the, You go on Tinder, it's a paradox of choice. It's like nobody ever pairs up. I had to break that in my brain at some point. 
you know, even if you use Tinder, like you need to pair up sometimes, even if it's not a full on marriage or something, but the purpose of romantic love is for, for pairing for reproduction. As my mentor, Dr. Buss says, everything is mating, but that's for another video, <laughs> more controversy. People are gonna be bad and be like, no, you should care about everything that's happening in the world. Well, you should have empathy, but you cannot fry your brain trying to empathize with everybody because you'll end up helping nobody. Help yourself on the 150 people in your immediate circle. Try it for a year. You'll thank me later. Leave a comment below, especially if you disagree or if you vigorously agree. I like to hear from the extremes. Leave something below, subscribe to my channel. And uh, yeah, not even trying to sell you anything. Sometimes I try to sell people something. Sometimes I don't. Good luck out there. Stop with the news scrolling.